Thanks for watching HardRockHaven.net. This is Matt Pike from High on Fire. Well, uh, latest album is Luminiferous. Yeah. Got High on Fire, Matt Pike here talking to us. Thank you very much for talking to us. Um, yeah. We're here on the Decibel Tour 2016. Yeah. Uh, what, what have the show, this is kind of the tail end of the tour now. Yeah, right? yeah, we're all <laughs> pretty <laughs> worn now, man. <laughs> or at least, at least the older guys, I guess. Uh, yeah, it's been a great tour. It's been really smooth. Everybody gets along pretty good. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's a real great. diverse lineup. Uh, oh, yeah, you know? no, it's great, though. I'm a big fan of uh, Aboth and, like, the Immortal stuff and all that. So it's been really a pleasure being able to watch him every night and getting to be buddies with him and stuff, you know. And his whole crew is killer. And all. Everybody's just smooth, and you know. I've known the Skeleton Witch guys forever, but it's cool, like, me and the Tribulation guys have their have a really cool thing going on, you know. It's gothy or whatever. <laughs> it's super, super, definitely their own thing going on. Well, with the bill being that diverse, you know, with, with kind of something for everybody, do you think that High and Fire is getting, you know, are you winning over new new folks out there? New I fans? hope so. I've seen a few dudes painted like Abbott singing my lyrics, so I was like, hey, dead, something's going right, you know. I'm not letting them down, anyway. <laughs> so you're a fan of uh, Abbott's work? Uh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The moral well, he part. plays a bunch of the Sons of the Northern Darkness stuff, and I love that record. It's so good. <laughs> the guitar nice. playing over is so fucking rad. So. Do you remember the first time hearing Immortal? Uh, yeah, I was in the 90s sometime or something. I mean, the, he's the same age as me, but what's weird is, like, I think he started even before I did, which I was, like, touring when I was, like, 17. So he had to be, like, 15 or 16 when he was going at it hard, you know. I was just trying to get a West Coast tour right around then, so, you know. Uh, so Luminiferous was last year. Do you guys have any stuff in the early stages? For I'm not, album? well, I mean, we have leftover stuff from the last four albums. We have, you know, hours of riff tapes that we can always go back and, like, if we like some riffs or something, rehash them or rewrite them mm -hmm. or, you know, try to fit ones that we didn't use into something. But th there'll be new ideas, and uh, we're going to start writing in May. Uh, I think uh, we have a show in Austin, and then we're just going to be in New Orleans over, over like at the end of May, first week of June. We're going to start writing for New High on Fire and get that going. I was excited to see you guys put out uh, a couple live records, the Spitting Fire. Yeah, record. yeah, we thought it was time. I mean, it's been like 15 years or something. So, why? Uh, what was the decision to split them into two different releases of volumes? Um, because there were two different nights of shows, and we did a lot of our songs, you know, so we tried to be really covered up to that point, all of our music, or like pieces of all of our music, and uh, yeah, so we did two different sets, two different nights, and took the best takes out of all those, you know. I saw that Sleep is going to be playing that uh, Psycho Las Vegas show. With so it's on fire, so oh. I play Saturday with oh, on fire, man. I'm double duty. Which Jason from Neurosis does that with Sleep too. He'll like play a Sleep set and then do Neurosis. I don't think Al's done an Ohm one yet like that, or maybe he did at another festival. But he, if you play on a different day, it ain't a big deal. But Jason will do like a Sleep set and then eat some granola and go straight into Neurosis. It's like <laughs> Jesus, man, you're an animal, dude. Who wants to be up there for three and a half hours? You know, it's like. <laughs> Some great bands on that bill. Um, Blue Oyster Cult. Oh, yeah. Uh, Alice Cooper. I'm going to enjoy it. But Some like, classic you know, folks there. Being around Vegas and keeping my head on straight, I gotta, I'm got i probably going to have to hide, but I, I do have a good you know room there and stuff. So you know. Stay away from Vince Neil and uh, Nicolas Cage. Did you see that? But, uh, uh, oh. They, they got in some kind of physical altercation in Las Vegas. Or really? It was crazy. Yeah. Some people are out there. I haven't seen that yet. Yeah, there's a video of I'll us YouTube too. I'll YouTube that. Like, bear hugging. Out. Yeah, that's that's a must. <laughs> um, so we've got, the, you mentioned you've known the Skeleton Witch guys for a long time, and um, we, we talked to them on their first show with the new vocalist, and Scott mentioned that he was a, a huge fanboy of your, of your playing and everything. So. Oh, yeah, well, I met Scott when he was like, they were like <laughs> high school. We, we went through uh, one of the places in Ohio. I wanted, I thought it was like Chapel Hill or something, but no, I guess it was Columbus. Was, where are they from? I'm probably, Athens. Was, Athens. That's where it was, yeah, yeah. Athens, and then. They were like teenage kids, and we all played to like nine people. But you know, I met those dudes then, and so we have a history with them. We've been on tour with them before. You know, 
What are your thoughts on uh, on Adam, the new guy? Oh, he's great, man. I, th I think he's doing a really good job. And he's definitely on it. Definitely on it. How do you stay occupied? There's, you know, there's so much downtime on the road, just you know, waiting to go uh, on stage. No, not for me, man. It's well, I guess we're doing this stuff. So. Yeah. Between that and just, the, I have a billion friends and things of that nature. And I have, you know, it, if I sit down for a minute, I'll have like a bunch of sleep emails to do because I have to schedule two full-time bands pretty much or two semi this is a full-time band and sleeps like kind of my part-time thing but you know they're always pushing for something else and we need to like get a record done for that which is it's, i mean the material's there it's just we got to get our asses into a studio and record it and, uh, yeah but that's all coming up and yeah uh, i don't know every time i think i have everything scheduled and there's downtime there's not <laughs> Well, so doesn't I, work I, I would imagine it, it only gets worse when you're off the road. Mm -hmm. they're right, they're right. Well, I, I twiddle my thumbs and I self destruct, so I try to I try to keep busy all the time. You know, which means I don't go home. But I ain't got, you know, I have a cool apartment, but I don't really have anything going on at home. You know, yeah. so well, I'm curious what Matt Pike's apartment would be like then. Oh, it's cool, man. The furniture? It's, it's a, no, so. it's like a one bedroom. <laughs> thing with a lot of storage. Someone used to grow pot in there. And I was like, this would be a great place to grow pot, but I'm just throwing all my, you know, my, my books, because it's a small, it's almost like a studio, but there's this weird little bedroom. I can't even stand up in it, so I have to jump sideways. And then I have my little friend Phelan come over to change my sheets, because I can't do it, because I'm too tall. And she's like this little short girl. I'm all, I'll pay you to change my, <laughs> you know? And uh, yeah, I got a jacuzzi like bathtub. Oh, nice. It's, it's kind of luxury, but it's really small and it's underneath the house. And there you go. We got a backyard. It's like I'm not in Oakland when I'm there. <laughs> well, this lineup of High and Fire, it's been going for a long time now. Yeah. Uh, so what, what do you attribute to that? Just chemistry. Yeah. yeah. The three of us don't even fight <laughs> ever. I mean, I, there, there's not arguments or anything. There's there's weird little moments in time where we just all keep each other straightened out and really stay on top of making music and, and keeping keeping our game plan going. You know, the more we knock away at this, the bands that last for long periods of time have a long, s slow, steady climb, and we've been doing that for a really long time. And it's not like some overnight success. We busted our asses to be where we're here now. And there's still farther to go, but you know it's exciting because we can keep it rolling all the time. So, well, High and Fire is a great power trio. Uh, who is your favorite power trio? My favorite? Well, I love Motorhead. Um, God, so many. I mean, I love Jimi Hendrix. I was always a power trio, or mostly. Um, Tower of Power was three piece. If I'm correct. Uh, I don't know. I just. Well, you know, there's is. there's other oh Rush you know duh <laughs> duh Rush the masters yeah if you can do what Rush does you're doing okay <laughs> no. uh, Black Sabbath is calling it quits and you can hear I owe me on everything you do I mean you're clearly an influence oh uh, yeah big time uh, he's well, an influence on everybody in, in you have metal to, yeah. it, you know it's just the way it's it is. It. It, yeah if he's not your influence and you're in metal you're <laughs> fucking playing the wrong music you're doing it wrong yeah. yeah. Uh, what, what are your thoughts, though, on them? Just, uh, I know it's been a long time coming, well, but you know, should be the end. Yeah, I mean, it seems like, you know, there's, there's been health problems, and poor Ozzy's been just railroaded into touring so much, and he's like, they're all getting old, man, and it's like, if you made enough money to kind of retire and do that, they should enjoy the rest of their lives and not have to be under the stress or duress <laughs> of, uh, you know, constantly touring. But, you know... I, I always pictured myself when I get to that point is to like, I'll never quit playing music. So I do a couple of things a year, show up, play, and then just not be on tour all the time. Just play some festivals and play some cool stuff. And that's what I'd do if I was them. But you, you know, I'm not them and they're a lot older than me. And I'm sure, you know, I've had moments in my life where I've been on tour so long. I, once I'm off stage, I can't listen to music. I, I hate music, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and it lasts like two weeks, but I'm like, I can't, I need fucking silence or like a rotating fan for the ringing in my ears, you know. But I don't know. <laughs> Got you. Here's some uh, rapid five questions. So you know, the first thing that pops in your head, or you know, whatever the case may be. Uh, what was your favorite concert shirt growing up? Oh, uh, well, my Slayer Hello Waits one that I got at the show, and uh, 
I had another one. I had one of those original uh, Van Halen 1984 shirts. Oh, that's awesome. And that one got lost. I had it up until I was like 35 years old. And I'd still wear it. It was like paper thin <laughs> and moss had been chewing on it. I'd still wear it. It was only one of the, it was one of the only shirts I'd wear on stage because it was, it was light enough. Right. And like, you know. Was that the start of the shirtless, uh, like, Matt Pike? Yeah, after I lost Matt. Lost that shirt. <laughs> <was> probably, <yeah. laughs> no, I'll wear a wife beater. Like, I, I've had to play in some really cold weather before, so, I, you know, for the sake of my voice and shit like that. Oh, yeah. I, yeah <laughs> you don't want to be Yeah. Uh, what was the last great movie that you saw? Oh, uh, The Revenant? Or, or that one with... Uh, DiCaprio? Yeah. Di- DiCaprio? Yeah, DiCaprio. I'm sorry, my brain's not... That's what the coffee with crumb. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what it's about. Over the bear. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the first instrument that you bought that you were really excited about. Oh, dude, my Hondo like Explorer thing. It was it's called a Hondo Destroyer, and it had flames on it. I was like twelve years old. You know, I'd put on my Motley Crue headband, and run around the house, like pretend I was a rock star. Very nice. I, I knew when I was young what I was going to be doing. <laughs> What was your last meal today? Oh, I just, well, I couldn't even eat it. It was a heart attack. I had a Monte Cristo. I went vegetarian, so, or I'll, I'll eat fish every once in a while, so I'm pescatarian, really, but I had a Monte Cristo, and I had to leave the meat off it, and they deep fried it, yeah. and it came out, I took a couple bites, and I was like, Jesus, man, I got high cholesterol. That's why I changed my diet. I'm like, yeah. what am I doing? I'm going to kill myself today, dude. <laughs> so. You got quite a few tattoos. What was, what's your favorite? Uh, well, I love my back piece. I love my Charles Bronson. I love my two guardians, the Dagon worshippers. I like. Uh, I like how my tattoos mean something. You know, yeah, probably at a different moment done. in my life, I'm like a sailor. I just tattoo what, <laughs> I, what I'm doing at the moment as I go, and then it adds up in the near canvas for all my tattoo artist friends. <laughs> well, Matt, is there anything you'd like to say to a High on Fire fans that might be watching this? Oh, just hey, thanks for your support, and come out and see us. We, we just we strive to just get better and better and better so you know we've we've upped our thing so come out and see us don't think we're getting too old we're only getting better Matt thank you so much really appreciate it